Hi, Mark here from AmericanAeration.com, and in this video, I want to go over the pros and the cons of solar pond aeration. You know, alternative energy pond aeration is gaining a lot of attention, a lot of interest these days, rightfully so. Uh, we've already done a video on the pros and cons of windmill pond aeration, and in this video, we just want to cover the solar side as well, which is the other type of alternative energy you can use to aerate a pond. And uh, no question, solar offers some benefits, some very good benefits, but there are some drawbacks too. So let's get into that. Concerning the pros or the benefits, you know, solar, like wind, is really nullifying this idea that you need power by a water feature or a pond or, or lake. No power is no problem because these things are so versatile in where you can put them and uh, how you can configure them around a pond it's just a very very good option the pros with solar when i look at other alternative energy options which really the only other one is windmills and there's an asterisk by this but consistent operation i do feel that solar aerators provide more consistent day-to-day -day operation than windmills typically uh, there are many cases many customers we've heard from that said you know, when they got into the middle of summer, stifling heat, they ran into these very hot, still days and didn't get a lot out of the windmills. Uh, windmills are great if you have a breeze. You don't have to have gusty winds. You just need to have a breeze to turn the, the fan blades, but it has to have some air movement. Otherwise, you get no aeration at all. With even the direct drive solar, which is the kind that works only during daylight hours. It won't run around the clock, but during the day it will operate. If the sun comes up, you've got power and you've got air. And so to me, if you really look at the overall run times of these types of aerators, they do provide more consistent operation, uh, yet they don't come close to, of course, a, a plug and run system. Using particular pumps, using rocking piston pumps, which is what I highly advise in a solar aeration package, you actually can have very good depth capability. The systems we use are rated for 30 plus feet in depth and they hold up to that. Many of the original solar aerators that use linear pumps, uh, maybe DC pumps, direct current pumps, they didn't handle depth very well. They might have been good you know, 8, 10, 12 feet at max, which is somewhat limiting. And uh, with the rocking piston introduction into the solar side, which is, a, by the way, a compressor we've used with our regular aeration systems for decades, it brought a lot of capability to the system. And so now they can handle just about anything that you're going to throw at them. They can also handle larger ponds because of this compressor. Uh, Typically, you couldn't run a lot of diffusers on a standard solar aeration package, but now with the rocking piston pumps, you can run three, four diffusers, no problem. They also provide long-lasting operation. There isn't a whole lot that could go wrong in the overall system, and really your pumps are the engine and the workhorse, the real mechanism that's making this work. If you get a reliable pump, like most of these rocking piston systems are, that just produce air on a very consistent reliable basis you also end up having much longer lasting operation on a solar aerator compared to windmills for example so what about the cons well for some people this could be a big one aeration using solar energy tends to be more expensive than the windmill systems or the plug and run systems that you simply plug into an outlet and, and go they are in some cases twice as much uh, in terms of cost and when you look at the full-time solar aerators or the closer to full-time solar aerators using battery backup systems they can be four to five times as costly so there is a price difference getting into the systems initially also when you look at the direct drive systems which I mentioned before that d work during the daylight hours now these aren't going to work at night so in a different sense, just like windmills, they are inconsistent in their operation. You can increase this runtime with a battery backup feature, but again, you have a price to pay for that. Some people opt for that, and I guess you have to look at your overall needs and 
situation. It just depends on if the, uh, the full-time solar is a better option for someone. I don't find a huge deficiency of the direct drive aerators. I do think, again, they're fairly consistent in what they produce. And so as long as I'm getting some good aeration through the day, I feel like I'm, I'm doing pretty good with those. But <clears throat> you just need to know that they're still not going to be quite up to the caliber of a full-time plug-and-play aerator that you run off something like a 115-volt circuit. Panels and the pumps may need a bit of upkeep. The panels should be, of course, kept clean and in good condition for the best operation. Again, using the rocking piston compressors, the upkeep is pretty minimal. There is an air intake filter you want to watch and replace when you need to. And then the pumps can be rebuilt, which is actually not so much of a con. It's actually a benefit in my mind because the pumps can be updated and upgraded pretty easily by just updating the seals and gaskets around the piston. Usually you'll see this a couple years out um, with operation, two, three years out, you might want to update the seals and gaskets. Easy to do on site with a few simple tools, but it does require a little bit of maintenance. And so that's something to keep in mind. Finally, the other con, if, it, if you want to call it that, is that the full-time battery backed up options uh, in solar aerators right now is very limited. There's really only one company providing this type of system, which I think is also keeping its expense up a little bit. And it has something to do with their patent arrangement and very few companies are willing to go after that part of the market right now. Hopefully we'll see that change and more battery backed up full-time systems could be instituted in, into the marketplace and give people more options. But I guess we should be thankful that there's something at least available now. So some things you want to think about when you're looking at solar pond aeration. It's not necessarily going to be the most budget-friendly option you have. It doesn't mean it's a bad option. It just means that if money is the major factor, if investment funds are limited, you may want to consider windmills. Uh, you may want to look at other options like running uh, a typical plug and run system that would plug into 115 volt if you're let's say within a thousand feet of the pond with power you could still run an airline a burial airline from power to the pond and have a full featured full-time aerator running uh, and you wouldn't need to go with solar that's typically going to be the least expensive way to get the best aeration possible out of a setup but if your pond is very remote solar may be your next best option So the other thing that you'll hear from some providers in the solar realm is that you can save money because of no electrical cost. You're not paying for the monthly charge to run the pump. Well, that is true. You will save money over the long term with solar or windmills. But the costs that some of the uh, manufacturers or sellers of these alternative energy systems are promoting isn't quite as good as what they might be saying. In other words, you will save money, but typically the larger the system, the more money you'll save. You might be looking at savings per year of $180, $300, something in that range for most of these aerators using standard electrical costs. So it's not huge, but year after year, if you run the system for 10 years, you're looking at $1,800 to $3,000 savings in operational costs. And now you can start to justify and balance that out a little bit and, and the alternative energy options look a little better over time. Remember that solar aerators with rocking piston pumps are the best option. These compressors just provide a broader array of capability and I think better longevity than any other pumps you'll see used in solar aerators. And so this is the kind of pump I always look for in the systems that I'm working with. When you do that, the workable depths and the ability to power multiple diffusers is very, very comparable to a plug and run system. Also, these pumps are very easily rebuilt and updated so you can keep them running for years. In my opinion, if I had to choose between solar or windmills, I would tend to go to solar most often. Again, it would depend on your locality, your, your conditions where you are and where the pond is. And if you do get very consistent winds and you can pretty, pretty well feel confident that this system will run most of the time, a windmill may make more sense. And especially economically, it could make more sense. But otherwise, in most cases, I get 
more consistent performance and a broader range of capabilities out of the solar aerators than I do the windmills. So anyway, I hope this information helps you at least get started in your investigation of solar pond aeration. If you have any questions on aeration at all, get in touch with us at AmericanAeration.com. Happy to help, and I hope you have a great day wherever you are.